What up, y'all? I'm Steve with Elevated A, and today we got NJR Glass. Man, super cool. Uh, one of my cats found them uh, when we were getting this uh, Elevate Glass open and just been really cool. So today is really exciting because he's already done stage one and we got stage two here as well and I get to meet him actually uh, virtually. Uh, super excited. Uh, really quickly, I want to mention we got a really cool Elevate Veteran program. It's 501c3. You can donate some money, you can buy some stuff, and that will get us some money to help uh, get vets some glass blowing classes as well as something like a surfer if they are using cannabis to heal with. There's a lot of other methods that we use, uh, alternative methods to help, uh, help them as well heal. Also, we need your help with our Elevate Ambassador program. Check it out, elevateambassadors.com. You can be an Elevate doll, an Elevate gent. It's super cool, super fun. And uh, without the Elevate dolls and gents, we could not have made Heady Halloween happen. Uh, so thank you all for the dolls and gents that helped out. Uh, but check it out, you get to earn some free credits and you get some really cool stuff. Anyways, let's get into what we came for and go hang out with NJR Glass. Welcome to Elevated 8. We got NJR Glass here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. Great to be here. Hell yeah. Uh, so the first question, uh, how did you get into this crazy thing? I, I feel all us blowers are a little crazy, so I'm and glad I feel you did like it. it. Yeah, man. Every And I feel like almost every person that I've ever talked to that started Glass has some sort of like ridiculous story about how they found the medium. Um, so I'm always excited to hear other people's stories as well. Well, um, I actually had came out of a bad relationship and ended up moving back in with my parents in 2018, like right at the, well, at the end of 2017, early 2018. And I was working in a restaurant, didn't really have any kind of goals, didn't know where I was going in life had, had failed at a couple other things and was really just kind of in a, in a tight spot. And, uh, my friend, uh, someone I've actually been friends with for, I would say about 10, 15 years now, uh, her name's Gabby. And she was actually blowing glass out in Nashville, which is about two hours from where I live. And she uh, she came by to visit whenever I was moved back in and was she brought a case and was like, hey, I made all this stuff. Check it out. And I was like, you fucking made that. I was like, what? I was like, how? And she was just like she was telling me all about it. I was so hooked from the minute I saw her. So I was like, let me buy a pendant. Let me buy a dabber. Let me buy a cap. Like as much stuff as I could get. I was like, let me get one for my friend. You know, I, I basically bought her case out and was like so excited, so happy to show everybody. And then she's like, you want to come watch? And I was like, absolutely. So um, it was January of 2018. And she's like, yeah, come on out. And like, after, uh, after I get done working for the day, you can, you can hop on the torch for a little bit and check it out. So I'm like, oh my God, sure. And uh, it was about two weeks that that after about that offer came, I went out there and checked it out and she, she had been working on spoons all day. And then she's like, yeah, you want to, you want to give it a go. And I was like, great. And she's like, try and make a gather, bro. Trying to make just a marble was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. I was just, I was struggling and struggling, but I was smiling and having a good time. And I was just like, I was staring in that flame and I was just, Oh man, it was so great. And like, I knew I was hooked at that point. And just, uh, just from there, like I, I, I knew that I had to do whatever it was to save up money to get out to Asheville to, you know, to really start doing this. I was, I was just from day one. I was like, I have to, I have to do this for the rest of my life. And so uh, I started going out there weekly. Um, I go out on like Fridays and Saturdays and hang out for the weekend after I got done working at my regular job and uh, started taking like little classes on the side. And uh, eventually, she, it, it came down to April, and she's like, "Hey, my roommate's moving out, and I, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to blow glass anymore. Like, I'm not gonna be able to stay at the shop." And I was like. I just kind of just weighed my options in my head and was like, fuck it, let's go for it. And just like gave my boss a 30, 30 day notice. I was like, I'm leaving. Like, I'm, I'm going to go try it out. Let's see what happens. And fucking, I had like $5,000 saved up and just took a leap of faith. And here I am three years later, um, still making things happen. So I was, uh, it's just kind of like one of those things that like, you knew it was meant to be. Um, I just and, fell and in love with glass. Being and even Go being ahead. like you, you realized how difficult it was your first time there. Like, and, and, today, and it didn't scare you. 
today it's just as difficult. I yep. have some of the most, I have some of the most simple things go wrong on me and it can, it can make or break you in a day. But like, I think the perseverance and the struggle is what actually makes glass so rewarding. Is that like knowing that I can crack something and then just pick it right back up and try again. And I think that that's, I think that's something that you can't teach. Um, but it's something that's that life. Like you can, you can fuck up anything in life and you can, that's- you can steal for like in Boys in the Hood. You can steal from somebody, but you can make it yep. right for them by paying it back. You, Absolutely, you can fuck up. We're humans. Well, it's not even, and it it just depends on your matter of perspective because fucking up is really just like how much are you learning that day? Because I've had right. so many times where I'll check something and I'm like that check because of this, and I know that next time when I try and take that step a little bit more cautiously, it won't happen again in the future. And as long as you're learning, you're really not you know you're really not losing too much at that point and and that's the thing about failure like you don't fail if something checks on you or something breaks on you it's not a failure it is a learning curve Uh, you can for sure feel it as a failure but if you get back on the torch or anything in life and try it again not a failure so absolutely (laughs) i mean that's just how yeah, but so that's how I've lived my whole life. Like, I mean, there was a lot of things in life. I really wasn't necessarily like talented at anything, but I was always quick to learn. And so like, you know, I always, I always took that as an advantage. And like, I learned early on in life that the more you practice something, the better you get. And that 99% of things in life is just repetition and just learning the motions and that muscle memory kicks in. And then, you know, motherfucking like Michael nature. Jordan, right? He is what I like to say. High school good. basketball team. Right. You know, and right. But he had the love, he had the passion, and he had the fucking will. Uh, so yeah, hell yeah, that's. Really I think that's cool. what makes. I think that's what makes glass blowing. Uh, another another rewarding part of it is that it's just like so many people get on the torch and then just get off of it because of how difficult it can be or like the inconsistencies that come with it. Cause there are a lot of times where, you know, it might be slow in the winter time and orders aren't filling out as much, or you know, you're having a bad week and you crack everything you seem to make. Like there's a lot of. There's a lot of testaments and trials that you really have to you have to be willing to stick with in order to see it through. But that was one of the other things. Uh, my mentor is uh, his name is Magnum Magism on Instagram. He does like this insane wood grain where his his sculpting experience is phenomenal. He's thirty something years, but like he always he was always one to push me to always you know it's like you made a mistake, but are you going to learn from it? You know, and he was always he was always good to guide me in that way, and it, it I, I think it really helped me stick with it. And a lot of times when it got harder like that. That's nice. You mentioned a, a mentor. I usually bring that up. And so it sounds like you, you met the girl there uh, early mm-hmm. on and then she helped you build stuff. And it sounds like you found uh, uh, even more advanced mender to help bring your skills up faster. Um, well, I'll, I'll, let's say this. Um, I've had hundreds of glass blowers that I've talked to over the years that have just really given me insight, tips, tricks. A lot of people have been very warm and welcoming. Um, but yeah, uh, Gabby is the one who really, she brought me into the shop. She actually worked at Mag's shop. So he, he was her mentor originally. And when I went there just to kind of learn, he, I guess he took a liking to me because within the first couple of weeks, it went from, uh, he had one bench space available for collab spots. And then, uh, it was about a month or two that I had been coming and taking little lessons. He had an, he had an extra torch that he had set up on the bench for me to start working. He was like, Hey man, if you ever want to, you know, get into it, he's like, by all means. And then from there, it was like, yeah, I, I felt, I felt almost like he's offering me the space. Don't lose the opportunity. You know, like someone like that with that kind of knowledge and experience, like, and even the glass blowers that I've talked to over the years have said the same thing. Like the fact that I was able to work below mag is really, I mean, and I even accredit it. Like, I'm not the person I am today without his training. Um, he, like I said, he's, he had 25 years of experience before I even stepped into his shop. Uh, he worked for Hans Frabel for about 10 years, 15 years down in Georgia. I mean, he's got mm-hmm. sculpting experience like you've never seen before. Um, I mean, I've seen him make some of the craziest, most intricate stuff. And like, he flame anneals the whole thing. He's like, fuck a kill. I'm like, I know everything about the heat of this because glass. Because he like, knows the, the glass the and knowledge. that's it. Yeah. The knowledge of his glass was so like, and I saw that from day one. And I was like, if I, if I, if I have a question, if I have, if I have a stumbling step, he always had like a minute to answer the question. He always had time to stop what he was working on and give me a demonstration. And he would explain the tips of why, Hey, you're fucking up because you did this wrong. This is how you make it better. Hey, this would aesthetically increase the value of your piece. If you made this a little bit shorter or made this a little bit bigger. And like, he really gave me 
all those things that you don't even think of. Like I would never have known to look and say, hey, my shelf should be three millimeters shorter because it makes the whole piece flow better. Like mm-hmm. I would have never thought of that. And he was there to really, you know, give me that guidance, those tips. And like, like I said, I would not be, I would not be the artist that I am today without his guidance because a lot of my work actually reflects a lot of his, at least in my own opinion. Um, That's really a lot of my neat, style man. came from him. It, it, you know, uh, with all that, it sounds like uh, a one really important thing for a blower or somebody coming up or really anybody is to, to get in the right environment, immerse themselves in what they want, whether it's glass blowing, cooking, uh, yep. space. You, you become, I don't you know. become a product of your environment. I mean, it's, it's an old cliche, but it's true. You know, the more you're around that positive uplifting spirit and that that mindset like I like I said I was in Asheville for almost three years and like there's almost 300 400 glass blowers there mm-hmm. all of different levels of skill and I mean there's there's 20 30 people that I would consider masters there and then you've got hundreds of regular workers like myself and then you've got people that are just jumping into it but it's it's got something for everybody there's there's big galleries there's big shops there's distribution like there's all this great stuff and it's like a giant hub so I mean like as far as like new artists, like, yeah, I've always been, if anybody's within that region, I always tell them like, this is definitely. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, let's see if I can turn that on vibrate so that I don't happen again. There we go. I didn't want to miss your meeting. That's why I had it turned up. Um, but yeah, having, having that teacher was, I would say it was definitely the make or break having him there in person to say, Hey, this is how, you know, and him being so open to teach was the other thing, because when I first started um, talking to Gabby, she worked in a different shop when she first got into the glass scene Mm -hmm. and basically an apprentice. And the guy was just like, you know, you're making rolly bats until your fingers fall off. And like, you're making, you're making spoon pipes until I say you're better. And like, you know, it was a real controlling environment. Like, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that. And like, I don't think I would have made it in the glass scene if it had been like that, if I had started in a situation like that. So the fact that I was able to start in such mm-hmm. an open environment, such a welcome, welcoming home and like to be able to have that kind of mentorship and that teacher beside me, like, like I said, that, that really did make the world of difference. Um, and that's so really I think awesome. that's why, I, that's why I spent a lot of time trying to teach people. Um, even though I'm just one person and I have just an Instagram account, um, I got myself a pair of Diddy clips. I'm starting to work on setting up some tutorial videos, stuff like that, explaining the the whys and the hows, not just the, it's you know, the whys. Push, don't push the Maria here. Like you push the Maria here because, and the heat that you put into it does this. And like, you know, explain like the little tips and tricks. I want, want to give like that little in-depth um, explanation because the reality is like you can teach anybody, any technique. And I'm not, I'm not concerned. You're going to take my job because I know, the hours and the dedication and the practice. And I think that if you're willing to put that in and you beat me at it, then I applaud you. You know yep. what I mean? Cause you've earned that role. Like, and it's, and it's not a competition. Get me, don't get me wrong. Like we're all in this together. This is a hard ass career. Like I'm, I'm so thankful to see anybody taking on, taking on the medium because it's just in general, like it's so difficult. And like, if you're willing to blow glass, like I, I commend you because you're anybody crazy. ever said like, Anybody that's ever touched a torch knows how hard it is. Everybody knows that you got to keep your fingers moving constantly and that gravity is fighting not with you. Not one like, half second you can, like you might be able to, but not nah, even if you're doing something that's basic. And even when glass and, is cold, I'm still spinning it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, I think having teachers is super important. Yeah. Where do you get your inspiration and creativity friend, uh, from in your work? At first, um, I would say at first it was definitely a lot of cannabis. I'll, I mean, I'll just be straight up with you. Um, cannabis has been part of my life uh, since 2010, 2011. Um, I struggled with ADHD most of my life, and it really is like it's super medicine, man. Like I can I can get so much work done in a day when I know that I'm able to. It's like a reward system I've worked out for myself, but it really helps me keep my focus. And uh, do you find yeah. class has has helped you with ADHD. I find it's a, oh, it's absolutely. an amazing thing because you can work all these projects at the same time. And, and you can yes. I, I find the ADHD is almost like, it seems as though it's a hindrance at first, but the reality is it actually like, dude, it makes me work so much better because my brain is functioning that much faster and shit is just going through my head that much quicker. So when you can hone in on that train of thought and you can settle it down for just that half second, you are, I'm amazed at the shit I can do whenever I'm actually able to find that focus. It's just a matter of finding it to begin with. 
Um, yeah, I'm a big but person. I was saying, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was. I just wanted to get back to your original question, um, what, what I'm doing class for. Originally, the inspiration, like I said, was cannabis. Um, but now, so I would say it's more so my family. Um, def- nice. The fact that I'm able to pay my bills, the fact that I know where my food comes from, the fact that I know that my daughter is going to have everything she needs when she's born, like the fact that my wife doesn't have to worry about anything at all. Like, you know what I mean? That I'm here, I'm able to be a work from home dad, like that I can do all these things. Like, I think that is honestly what gets me up in the morning. And I think that's my main inspiration these days versus at first, like I was like, hell yeah, I smoke weed. And now I get to make pipes. Like now it's more like, Hey, I get to, I get to support a real dream and I get to, I get to make my family proud. And I think that's, I think that at the end of the day is really what is what really drives me now. It's, it sounds like you matured really is what is kind of what happened. Not that there's anything wrong, you know, creating for the cannabis or doing that, but don't get me wrong. I'm still a big and I'm still a big hippie. Like, and I, and I, I love my cannabis till the day I die because it's, it's done wonders for the world and it's, it's medicine for thousands of people. And if people want to smoke crazy recyclers, like I'm happy to make them. Um, mm-hmm. That was actually what really drew me into glass was I, I owned a recycler and was like, this is the coolest shit ever. Like water spinning, like I want to make those. And so like, that was like, that was like day one goal. And like, I spent months beating my head against the wall, just trying to figure out Jesus seals and down stems. And like, but again, like that, pro- that pain was all part of the process. And now mm-hmm. it like, it really, I mean, I'll catch myself tearing up sometimes. I'll just be like working on a, just a regular proto piece. And I'm just like, I'm so, I'm so emotional because I'm so happy that I'm here, that I worked through all that pain, through all that struggle. And like, now I can just sit here and dance and just listen to music and just have a good time and like feel the, feel the glass in my hands. Like it's, a, it's, a, it's truly a rewarding experience. Um, and, and for that, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm eternally thankful for that. You know, you mentioned the, the pain and the struggles and like, I've been hit, hit bad before when I said, I, I expect everybody to feel pain and to struggle, you know, I, reality without the pain and struggles, I don't know if you grew through life, if, if, if you didn't feel those things, you know, every lion, everything out there has to figure out how to hunt. And, and during that hunt, you're going to get scratched up and beat up possibly. And, and you might not get that food and die. And so like life is such a struggle. And that's what was so neat. You said you're tearing up because you had to go through those struggles. You beat those struggles. And, And it's not that you wish anybody to struggle in life, but if you haven't struggled, you haven't really lived in. Well, you know, it's just like you said, it's very rewarding whenever you've done something for yourself. Um, it's the same reason that I like cutting the grass. Like nobody likes to fucking cut the grass. But when it's done, it looks good and you're proud of yourself. And you're like, hey, I did that. I did a good job. And now I can I can enjoy it for the time being. And I think that with glass, it's the same way. It's like, you know, when you're working on something and you see something that you struggled with for so long and then all of a sudden it's like second nature and you're like oh i I had these really these really you know kinky drains and they were always or like i they were off center and wiggly and now it's like i bend it the same every way and it's like i know that each time i heat it that's the motion and like you know it's like and i think it's those moments that i really realized like hey like you you did it you You i I hate i hate to i hate to be my own cheerleader i hate to pat myself on the back but sometimes you have to and you have to be like hey you know it's like good job like i'm proud of you like but keep working and i like i always try to keep that that mindset because i know damn well the second that you're like "Ooh, i got this i'm the shit pink crack boom like that's just how it goes and um (laughs) i think that's really cool though because i really feel like glass does that to you man it really keeps you humble it keeps you remembering like even you sheen break shit bro like He's one of the best. And he's still like to this. I'm sure he has a crack every once in a while. And like, that's just the shit that happens. Like, I'm sure Banjo might get on that last step and something checks. Like, but does that stop him from being Banjo? Absolutely not. He fucking picks his shit back up and he does it again. Like, and that's that's one of those things I always remind myself. Like, they started making chillums, bro. They started making pendants and marbles. And like, they started making wonky shit, too. Like, all They've the rest been doing of not this everybody 20, 30 years. That's what That's people what I'm don't understand sometimes. Like, you know, and, and I got to say, you know, they also had a longer learning curve. I mean, you said you're at three years into this and mm-hmm. at three years, that's fucking crazy, man, to be able to put together a rig the way you do it. Like, so with, you know, getting the mentors and as our knowledge keeps building up and it, 
I Instagram's a great tool these days too. It really is. Um, not only Instagram, but like these interviews, for example, like stuff like this, where glass blowers might have questions that they might not, you know, they might not see in just your regular tutorial video and stuff like that. But when you get a chance to actually hear from the artists, like you might actually get a chance to hear some of why they do the things they do or get re-inspired or things like that. And I think that that's also very crucial. Um, the fact that we're such a open and sharing community, like I said, I've heard stories of like people like, you don't look at my techniques you know what i mean like versus I like now admit, it's like you can go on i will admit i've been like said, there in the past because you don't know it the used knowledge. to be a competitive scene it, it used to be like you've got like operation pipe dreams and stuff like i wasn't around for that so like i've heard the stories and i've heard people talk about like how it used to be like you couldn't get on instagram and post pictures of pipes you had to discreetly bring it in a in a black case to your to your distributor at night so nobody saw you bringing pipes in and like it's you know, so it's the fact that today, like we have all the tools and the resources available. I think that it's just absolutely phenomenal. And I really think that like, like you say, like, we'll see, it's a, like we're seeing so much innovation now, just in the last 10 years. I can't wait to see like the next 20 years when someone's able to hop right on a torch with, a, with a mentor like Mag and just, you know, do the things that I do. And like, cause again, like it, it really opens up the door when you have that knowledge and that skill set and that little bit of extra guidance and, like I said, with it being so prevalent today on YouTube or now we've got people doing Patreon lessons, things like Paul Taylor, he does, I know he does like individual lessons for people and stuff like, like that's huge. Like that's really opening a lot of doors for a lot of people that might've just said, Hey, I'm going to work at McDonald's because I don't know what I'm doing with my life. You know what I mean? But now you've got some of that might be able to say, Hey, I'm going to make, I'm going to make glass blowing because I, I got a chance to see this guy make a pipe at a festival. And like, now I'm hooked. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a lot more open and out in the air. And like now with the, uh, with the taboo of cannabis culture being, you know, almost non-existent these days, it seems as though like the more we move forward towards legalization and stuff like that, like we're going to see even more of a pipe scene coming up. I agree. So, I, I mean, I really look forward to seeing the innovation, man. I, I, I like seeing all these people coming out on the scene every day and they just, they're making new shit. They're making shit that I would have never thought of. Like it inspires me to do new shit that I would never like. Mm -hmm. it, it's really cool. Like it's like I said, it's definitely not a competition because some people are just better at shit. Some people are just quicker. Some people are just smarter. And it just like it all comes down to but what makes people, you happy and how much. The Go people ahead. that are better or smarter. Right. Those are small gifts that they were given. But correct. But what everybody has is is will and determination. So with enough will and determination, Anything you can get there. And that's yeah. another thing. Like they say, IQ is this. But there's also an emotional IQ of how people talk and communicate. And if you have a high IQ, but low here, you can't move in the world. So it's really figuring out who you are, figuring out what your abilities are. ADHD, it's not a disability. It's another way of life. I have, it, ah, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, and glass is just an amazing thing to, to let people discover themselves, I think. Is, and is I think that's mean. ultimately what it is, because um, I mean, it loops back to what I was saying originally, like, you know, like when I first when I first found glass, I didn't have any clue where I was going in life. Like, I mean, I was trying to be a I was trying to be a rapper a few years before that. You know what I mean? Like, I just I had no clue. I was like, I want to be I want to be this. I want to be that. But at the end of it, I was just sitting in my mom's basement doing basically nothing. Like, I mean, I was working a job. Don't get me wrong. I was paying my bills and shit like that. But at the same time, like, I felt like, is this what I want to be doing 10 years from now? Do I just want to work in restaurants the rest of my life? Like. No. So whenever that opportunity arose, like I was like, I will do anything to make sure that I can make this happen. Like there was, I mean, don't get me wrong. There were times when like, it was tough. Like that first year, nobody <laughs> wanted to buy my glass. Nobody wanted to buy yet. janky ass $2 pipes. No, no. Who, who wants that? Like, and I was so discouraging. I was like, I made 30 pipes over like three weeks. And he's like, I'll give you 60 bucks. I was like, what? And he's like, that's before I take my percent. I was like, this is not feasible. And like, Fortunately, I, I stuck with it. I mean, I had I had other things going at the time that that kept me afloat. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I knew that that would also run out and I had to make a decision. It was like either buckle down and really get serious or just, you know, kind of just keep having fun and just, you know, ultimately burn out. Um, you got to mature. Was, <laughs> yeah, there was one night I was uh, I, I me and my me and my roommate at the time, we'd had some disagreements. Uh, she had somebody move in that I didn't really want there. So I ended up leaving, but without anywhere to go. And so fortunately for me, my mentor actually had 
the space available and he was like, Hey, you can just move right in with me. He's like, I got a basement studio apartment. Like I'll let you rent it out. You can work from here. Like, and I, and I, I moved in and shortly after that, like I was still struggling very, very much financially. And I'm like, I can't squander this opportunity. So many people would die to be here working alongside of someone like I consider my Mag to be up there with those greats. Like I really do consider his his ability to be someone of a banjo or a Yushin. I think he just didn't really enter the conversation, but he has the skills to be in that conversation. Um, and so being there with him, I knew that like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like you don't pass this up. And like there was one night like that I was just in my kitchen making dinner and I had been vegetarian for like three weeks, not by choice. You know what I mean? Like I just couldn't afford to buy meat. And I was so upset about that that like I was just I broke down while I was cooking dinner I just started crying and I was like I have to do better I have to change something I have to make this work and I don't know I woke up the next morning ready to go and and like from there on out I was working like I was working like four days a week before that five six seven eight hours a day not a lot to working seven days a week 12 14 hours a day for like the next year straight I mean I didn't take a day off for like three months I just Every day I woke up, I was like, I want to blow glass. I want to make these pipes. I'm going to do it. And like the the level of which my art improved just during that first three months was just dramatic. And I actually was able to find myself a solid distributor that actually ultimately is the reason I'm here today because they were, they were like, Hey, your work looks great. We don't actually have many people making this kind of product. We'd love to bring you on, bring as many as you can. It was, it was consignment at first. So I was like, I was really excited, but then it's like the checks weren't rolling in. And then all of a sudden, like, I brought a big drop in They were like, we'd love to buy this outright. And that was just like, and they were like, from here on out, we'll buy everything you bring us. And like, cause your quality like said, without had to them, get I, up there. The relationship had exactly. to be built. Like, yes, it just is what it is. Life is a challenge. And that's why I push. And that's why I push so many young artists that are struggling. I'm like, look, like you can do this. Like you're almost there. Like you have the knowledge, you have the know-how, like just a little bit further that, that light is there. Like, I know you can see it too. We just, you know, so I always, like I said, whenever I have an opportunity to kind of help somebody who's struggling, like I'll take a minute and reach out and just, Hey, I see, I see your rig. It looks good. This is where you're having trouble with your down stems. I've had that same issue before. Yeah. Try this out. Maybe it'll help. And, you know, I've seen, more times than not, a lot of artists that have that have benefited from that, and so and, you know, and that really brings me a lot of joy too to know that I can that I can help people the same way that those teachers taught me. Teaching is uh, one of the greatest <laughs> joys, you know. Like uh, it, it's pretty cool to be able to to help somebody grow. Like it's one of my favorite things in life. Yeah, yeah. Um, being being able to help people, I told my mom that from a young age. I was like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. I just want to help people, and like. Sure enough, I found a job where I can help people every day. And I think that's great. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, do you get to collaborate often then? Often, not really. Um, and I think that's honestly a little bit of my fault. Um, I'm, I'm really busy. I have a lot of orders to keep up with. I have a lot of shops that waiting on sh- I have the two distributors. I that's took great. on a second one. I took on a second one during the pandemic. And now I'm like, I'm just juggling. You know what I mean? I'm like, as soon as I sell to them, like the next time I go to drop to the other one and they're already sold out of the first one. So it's right. like, I'm just, but again, thanks. Thankful. So thankful for that. Like I'm, 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 I'm very thankful to be as busy as I am considering how, how busy I wasn't the first few years. Um, but as far as collaborations go, I've gotten in quite a few. Um, I've done quite a few with Gabby Helios class. That's who, uh, who brought me in. I did, I want to say we did about four or five, different collabs she does some beautiful rainbow wrap and rakes and so like i automatically was like i want to incorporate that into some of my work so we did a couple of pieces uh mag and me have done a couple of forced collabs because he gave me some prep that he wasn't wanting anymore and i was like sure i'll turn that into something um (laughs) but we do have a collab scheduled uh he does this amazing wood grain work and we've talked about it we want to do like a a wood grain recycler with a stump base and like we're gonna have it all it's going to be really faceted carved out. Like we've got a really long project that we've planned on, but it's just a matter of like me having the time, him having the time, us both having families, work schedules, things like that. It, it's, it's, it's a lot of that. Um, I just most recently did one with uh, Joey, Joey Adams, his uh, Instagram is sweet feet glass. Okay. He does some amazing fume work, uh, a lot of inside out work. Uh, his, his fume spectrums are incredible. Um, he just had a show at uh, cosmic cowboy on Halloween. And so I did a submission with him we did uh we did a collaborative recycler and then uh i also did one with 
wavy glass. Uh, it's one of my friends that I met out in Nashville, as well as e kelp glass. I, uh, I met both of those glass blowers while I was out in Nashville, and they both handed me off some prep, and we made some cool stuff. Um, nice. As far as future collabs, man, I've got a list of people I would love to work with. Um, but I really think it's a matter of those artists reaching out to me. I don't feel like I've earned that level of respect yet. I don't think I'm, and, and again, like I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of myself. I'm a young glass blower. There's a reason that I set my prices lower. There's a reason that, you know, I, 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 I'm a little bit less hesitant to, or a little bit more hesitant to jump into bigger projects with bigger names, because, you know, I understand that I'm still learning. I still have a lot of things that I need to perfect before I'm, I'm comfortable taking someone's, you know, thousand dollar prep and, and then fucking it up. Like I can't, you know, I'm, I'm scared of things like that still. So until I, till I personally reach a level where I feel like I'm, you know, if you hand me something, I'm going to do it right the first time. Like I'm, I'm still kind of hesitant. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll be hopefully, like I said, hope I'd love to work with some big names in the future, but right now I know that it's all about establishing my own name, establishing my own set of skills and like, Cause the reality is like a collab means that like I can do something that you can't, that's what makes it a collab. Like right. otherwise like, working well, together. And I'm not, and it's, it's not necessarily that you can't, but it's like, let's say that I'm really good at building a recycler and you're really good at fume prep. Like I could make a fumed recycler. Sure. But like, if I took your expertise and combined it with my expertise, we can make something great and we can make something beautiful. And so like, I'm really, honestly, I'm still, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm still refining a lot of my skills. Um, before I'm before I'm really ready to to take someone else who's because again if you hand me your prep and you put ten years worth of expertise and knowledge into that and I fuck it up like dude that's that's disrespectful so like again like I want to make sure that I'm I'm at that level where I'm comfortable to take almost anybody's prep and turn it into something beautiful and that's that's just knowing so, where you're at in life and 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 sticking within your your mold and always growing ten percent but not saying hey let me try this big thing and and you can try big things. When you're on your I try own. to push myself out of my comfort zone every every so often. Um, every year anniversary, I do a really big a really big project. Um, things like that. When I do giveaways, I try to do really nice stuff. Um, and even some customs I've that I've been given artistic freedom, I've really put a lot of effort into. But um, I don't know. That market's hard, man. Like headies are hard. Like I I, I don't know what to sell shit for because I put forty hours into something, and I'm like. I don't know what that's worth. Like, I know what a, a clear piece is worth. I know what clear tubing and all that. But like, when you factor in like hand making shit and like when you put in attachments think, or faceting, like, I think when the skill set is there, I think the reality is if you're not learning, but you're going through the motions and it happening, you're looking at a hundred to 150 an hour, right? Yeah. It's the end retail price because right. a it's years to get the skill set. I mean, uh, uh, you call yeah, a plumber to your house man. that's 100 150 an hour so how is your skill set that took years to build not equal to somebody so that's where like it is there and that's why people yeah. say how did this rig cost four grand because it took the dude 30 or 40 hours to make it plus 20 Marketing years to bitch. build it yeah but marketing is a bitch the people have to understand hard, yeah. what it takes to go into the glass they also have to have the funds uh, liquidable to where they can move those funds easily. And it doesn't yep. like I spend a hundred dollars on something like that's That's a lot of cash, man. But some people spend a thousand and they're like, man, Great. that was just breakfast, yo. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I'll, I will say ultimately though, like, while yeah, it would be great to be getting full retail on stuff um, or to be making super heady $10,000 pieces. Sure. Um, that's just not me. That's not who I am as a person. Um, I don't know. Like I've had a really good interaction with all types of glass blowers. Um, I've met your standard pipe maker production people who just do it for a job. I've met your heady boys that, you know, they'll, they'll put shit on a stick and call it $20,000. Like, and again, like nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I totally support those people because a lot of those people have earned their market and they deserve it. So again, like kudos to you, no shade, but the point being, I'm an everyday person. I'm just a working man. Like I, I drink black coffee every morning. I put my pants on and like, I go out in the shop and I start working. And like, I don't know, like I've always been a regular person. I've always just worked hard. And just at the end of the week, like, I, I mean, I worked retail, I worked customer service for years. I was in restaurants. I was in hotels. Like I've done it all. And at the end of that two week period, when your paycheck comes up, it's nice to treat yourself. And like, that's, that's who I'm working for. You know what I mean? Like I try to make my art as, 
clean and functional as possible while also keeping it within a very reasonable price range because at the same time like i'm not trying to break the bank like i mean yeah sure my art my, my art if you put it next to something else and let's say the price tag just for example is a thousand dollars versus five thousand dollars like i'm happy taking that thousand dollars knowing that i put someone else like gave them the opportunity to own that same art that they might not have been able to buy the upscale version of like i'm happy to make that guy who's been working in the kitchen for a month and he saved up from two paychecks and he's ready to buy himself a nice little rig, but he can't meet the retail price. I'm willing to work with that guy and take off like, Hey, what's your price range sold? You know, because again, like I, I relate to those people more so because I've been that person my whole life. I've always been that, like, hey, you have to work hard. Like when we were growing up, like my mom would have to go and borrow money from my grandma just to go get a pack of hot dogs to feed us for dinner. Like we didn't have nothing growing up. Like it was always like, like we, I didn't get my high school yearbook. I didn't get my senior pictures. Like that shit was rough growing up. Like my family really struggled to make ends meet, but like they always found a way to do it. Like my dad worked hard, backbreaking jobs just to put food on the table, come home so exhausted. He just had to go to bed because he had to get up the next morning to work. And like, I relate to that so much versus like, I've hung out with these dudes that are like, I got 10, 10 ounces of rosin. And like, that's, you know, and again, like, it's cool. I get it. I no shade, but again, like, it's just not me. Like I've, right. I've had, to, you know, I've had to work so hard for everything. And like, some people are just like, Oh, my dad gave me a hundred thousand dollar business loan or my mom bought my torch or like, you know what I mean? Like, and again, that's totally fine. It's just like, I just, I couldn't relate to that. It was hard for me to, you know, to make something and say, Hey, this is worth $2,000 because like, how, like, I mean, I get it. Like, I guess it's just like imposter syndrome. You know, like, I don't really think that my art should be valued at higher prices but then when i look at the competitive market i'm like hey like that guy's getting the exact same work for double the price i'm like but i don't know like i said it's hard for me to to morally want to charge people more money knowing that like i get the opportunity to wake up when i want to wake up i get to just smoke weed all day and listen to music and watch podcasts and dance and fucking melt shit like that's the fucking that's the lottery bro but you get to do that because you you suffered you put in the pain and suffering yeah. and that's the point. Sure. Like, fuck yeah, motherfuckers need a pain and suffer because after that, then you can like live and understand and, and get a tear when you're like, fuck yeah, you know, I've, I've done this. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you have a oh, favorite, yeah. to- sorry, do you have a favorite color you really like to work with you, with your glass or do North you? Star pomegranate. Pomegranate. That's that, that's that go-to. Oh my God. I've never worked a more stable color. It's always, it's, I can buy it in odd form. I can buy it in seconds. I can buy it in first. It's always going to strike. It's always going to work. It's a perfect complement to fume work. Um, mm. I like, I, I really like it. Um, as far as like my favorite color that, I mean, it's, it's hard to work, but as far as like the way that it looks, I'd have to say tell magenta is probably my favorite. Like, as like, I love that pink opalescent hue. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but as far as like workability, yeah, man, pomegranate is a go-to. Like I keep a stash of it in my toolbox at all times. Like if I'm ever working on a fume project, I know it's perfect for backing. I know it's a perfect complement to that orange, yellow, green, blue. Like I know it, you know, it's, uh, is, and it's a great color for starting out too. It was one of the first colors I learned how to coil pot. Um, and it was, it was easy to learn how to like gather and recondense and blow it out versus like I tried with some colors like Haterade or Cobalt at first and they're so stiff and I just, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of struggling. So um, I think maybe it's just the nostalgia of one of like one of my first colors that I really just like it is was able to get color, something though. made out of. Oh my it, God, it's incredible. Yeah. And you can put it over almost anything and it just, it, it just pops that other color that, that works well yeah. with it. It's a great color. Yeah, uh, what, North Star has been putting out some great work lately. What colors do you not like if uh, somebody gave you a stick cadmium. and you'd be like, man, throw that? Not a fan of cadmium. Um, and that's just because I work on a Carlisle. So I, it's just, it just beats the shit out of those colors. And I'm like, I've got a pound of tangy that's just sitting there because like, I mean, and I've used it, but like I've, I've used it on a GTT as well with that extra oxygen and I know the difference and I know like how much, like, I mean, I'll spend an hour trying to gather up one stick on this torch versus like I do it in 10 minutes on a, on a GTT. So oh, wow. ultimately I've had to just, I've had to just stay away from cadmiums in general. Now that's not to say that I can't use them. Um, I have definitely used them before. Um, and I've had, and I've been able to use them like without bubbling them. But again, like 
without the proper tools, I feel it's hard to do the proper job. And even though I'm a big advocate on you can work any kind of glass on any torch, which is true. A lot of people are like, I can only work on this type of torch. And I think that's a, a crutch mentality. I've, I've found myself to be able to work on a Red Max, on, on Herbie, on a Mirage. Like I can do a little bit on all of them, um, just knowing the flame chemistry. But mm -hmm. Just that, just that fuel mixture, I think, honestly, it really holds you back on a Carlisle for some things. But uh, for, for overall use, I haven't needed a GTT yet, just because that Carlisle is a workhorse. It does everything I need it to. It's fucking reliable. Like, I haven't needed really any more heat other than, like, back stacks, but I don't pull them that often. So, again, not really. It's just something that, like, you know, it's just, it's a matter of the tools that I have. Um, so, yeah, cadmiums are, like, any kind of, like, those old white formulas, things like, like, the Snow White, those are hard for me. Um, but Lotus is nice. Yes. I love Lotus White. That's that's one of my favorites. I'll, I'll, oh, my God. Like, that was, that's some good white. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's been loving that white, man. It's crazy. Um, have you ever competed in any events? This is my first one. Well, I mean, like outside of glass, yeah. But as far as like glass blowing events, this is my first one. Um, okay. This is my first kind of like competition. I've done show submissions, stuff like that. Um, and I've done a couple of uh, at, at Level 42 Gallery in Asheville, they have these things called uh, glass gatherings. Mm -hmm. And they're for glass blowers by glass blowers. So it's just like they have a big studio space. And I think they have like 15 bench spaces available. Like it's a big gallery slash studio. Mm -hmm. And they'll bring in like it would be like the last Saturday of the month. It's just like an inv invitation open to all artists who want to come in and collab with they they would buy a couple pounds of glass and just set it out on the table. And like whatever you want to work with, go ahead. You guys just, you know, have fun. And like that was that was honestly that was and it was before the pandemic, obviously. But that was honestly some of the best memories that I have in my glass career was going to those events and just like talking to so many like minded people because like. I moved. I'm I'm about two hours outside of Asheville, and I'm actually the only glass blower in my area within about an hour and a half radius. So I don't, man, I don't talk shop with anybody anymore. Like this is yeah. the most glass blowing I've talked in like months, and like I'm super, you know, I love it. But uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's, it's it's like those events were super awesome, and like being able to sit down and meet like minded folks, and being able to talk to people, and like discuss ideas, learn techniques, and like get demonstrations. Like it was huge. Um, and then we did uh, Glass Roots in 2019. I did that. Um, Level 42 had a big booth and they took a lot of my work. And uh, I was able to experience a trade show firsthand because it was in Asheville. And right. it was insane. Like, I've never seen so many pipe makers, so many glass audits. Like, I got to meet uh, Robert Mickelson. That was huge. Like, it was really like a humbling moment. Like, I got to see the the uh the art of war series on display like all those big ass guns and i was oh my god i was blown away it's crazy like talk about inspiration like yeah and that's that's another thing that keeps me going man like those dudes are doing it like i want to do that shit like so how do you get there like and you take that point and you take the point you're at and you make a whole list of all the things you got to do to get to that point and like the first thing on that list is waking up and turning that torch on every day so yep yep um do you use your own pieces uh, if you consume, uh, when you consume cannabis, or do you use other people's? Second quality pieces are the only thing that actually, because uh, time is money. And yep. so at this point in my career, like every time that I that I have something that comes out off center or like slightly wobbly, like I, I can't sell it because you put them in a line next to the other 10 and it's, you know, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So second quality pieces, yeah. Um, if I'm ever making a prototype, like first of a design, I always keep it because I'm not trying to put something out there that doesn't function. Um, I don't want to sell something that, you know, somebody's going to put money into that ultimately is, is a piece of shit. I don't want to do that. Um, and I actually do have a nice little collection. Um, it's not what it used to be. Um, cause I sold off a lot of it when I first started blowing glass, but now that I actually collect now it's it's from artists that i look up to so like for example i've got i want to say like 10 pieces that magus made like i've got pendants i've got necklaces i've got uh i've got marbles i got a spinning top i've got one of his rigs i've got a cup like i mean i've got anything that man has made i got a sherlock like i've got i got something of his um i've got stuff by minguez i've got stuff by hemlock i've got some stuff by uh Andrew Warren, I've got one of his sifters. I've got some stuff by Glassical Creations. I got a, uh, one of his Millies, uh, a Paul Taylor marble. You know, I've got a lot of cool stuff. 
Um, yeah. But overall, like, yeah, my collection is mostly is mostly my own work, which I'm always trying to thin it down too. like I've got a couple of friends around where I live that like, dude, here, please take like four or five rigs. Enjoy them. Like, I don't want them. I don't want to look at them anymore. Like I'm tired. And, it, and for them, it's a huge, you know, they just got a thousand dollars worth of glasses they didn't have to buy. Like, so I'm always, you know, when I, I get my use out of them and then I usually tend to find them good homes nice. um, because I, I don't want to have a shelf full of glass either. Like I, I keep my collection nice, but I don't want to have a thousand prototypes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think that I think that using your work, uh, especially when you make functionals, is is crucial to research. Absolutely, and uh, you Absolutely. can't make a recycler and then just assume that it functions. Like after you've made a hundred of them, sure, and you know that it works the same every time, you don't have to put water in. But on the first couple, I would definitely be testing them out and be like, okay, well, it's not working because of this, or like, you know, you don't learn unless you put a hundred dabs through it. So like, yeah, I still feel refining the recyclers is to me is still a refinement. Like. I understand you need water here and I got to get more up here and then it needs to have the, the gravity pressure to get it down. Oh, like a hundred different things that go into it. We get I mean, it, but right. It's like all the diameters and how much water. And it's like, it's a lot. Um, what the portions, everything. What do you think we can like if you're uh, go ahead? Go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. It's, it's, it's a relevant detail. Go ahead. Uh, what do you, what do you think we can look forward to uh, in the future from you? Um, I've really been enjoying, uh, I've really been enjoying line work lately. Mm. Um, I like fume work a lot as well, but I'd say that line work would probably be my next, the next thing I want to incorporate into my work. I really liked clean terminate, like, and it's just like, don't get me wrong, like line works beautiful, but there's a lot of it out there that's sloppy. And I want to do like, I really like, I look at people like Nady and like, his shit's clean. Like I look at Eric Anders or, uh, Eric yeah, Anders. Man. Dude, yeah clean like Holy that's what i'm fuck. saying like that's that's versus like you know like some some sloppy terminations and shit like that like i really want to before i put it out in the world i'd really like to clean it up but overall i'd say that's probably in my next like two to three year plan is to get comfortable with pulling back stacks and coming up with some patterns and stuff like that um and ultimately up, upgrading my uh my lapidary wheel um i have like the most basic setup you can have with the uh the import chinese arm like i mean it does you gotta you gotta count seconds to make sure that you're not over grinding and like you over grind one face and you gotta do the whole thing and like <laughs> it's it's a lot of work so like i'm saving up for a lap dancer um i plan on getting myself something a little bit nicer so i can really put out some nicer quality work um and really I'm, I'm focusing a lot more on like my color work as well my clear work is 100 percent where i want it to be i know shaping i know my my heats i know my my flame chemistry i've got all that down into a repetitive motion i can make 100 recyclers and then they all look the same so at this point i'm really i'm spending a lot more time with like things like blowouts uh sleeving things like that like i've been doing it for years but i've, I've noticed that that is probably my next area of fine tuning um being able to really put out consistently colored work um because you know how color is man sometimes it just don't want to work with you and yep. like that's just stressful so I, I think that like the key to making that shit not stressful is practice and you know i think if i spend a lot of time working on it um i'll get better and uh, I, I, I won't I won't say that I don't buy tubing because um, I do sometimes um, depending it depends on the project like if I've got a deadline and I got to make it happen I like to take that variable out I like to say okay I'm gonna buy some tubing and just jump straight into it versus you know spending the three or four hours that it takes to gather up the color and blow it out mm -hmm. sleeve it and do all that stuff um, but I think that ultimately doing stuff like that can lead to being a crutch uh, the same way that a blow hose could be a crutch for shaping um, it's one of one of the main things I learned from my teacher was that we use the blow hose when we need it, but that's it. Like we don't shape with it. We don't fucking like I use it for seals. That's about it. Uh, Dude, it's crazy. I, I do all my shaping. It's crazy. You mentioned a blow tube. It brings me back. So I've actually been to China four times in their glass blowing facilities mm -hmm. and shit. My first time there, I was self-taught, had the blow tube. That's the only thing I knew. And I, I go mm -hmm. out there and I see these motherfuckers blowing shit with no blow tubes. They're just doing it. And I was fucking blown away because I had never seen it. They're creating stuff better than I can do with a blow tube. And that is just knowing the skill set. And that's really cool. You said that, like not using your blow tube as a crutch, because there is so much you can do without a blow tube and a blow tube. And I feel like it's restrictive a lot up. of times, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah blow tube it's is really restrictive. Like if I need to have that exact motion and pull it over, like I know 
how it feels with the blow tube. That's extra drag. I can hit it on something, snag it on something, tear it off center. Oh like, I love a and blast yeah, that shield. Another thing. It's awesome, but the blast shield will always catch the blow tube, and then you're fucking getting caught in it. And every time, yeah. or the knobs on my Carlisle, it loves to snag on my Carlisle knobs, bro. I'll be like trying to put on a joint for the last step, and it snags. I'm like, yeah. Like, oh man, it is it's stressful. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I, I say it's stressful for lack of better terms. Um, but ultimately it's very rewarding and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So, Hell um, yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of like you were saying, uh, you went over to China and saw a new method. Um, I actually learned from mag to, to, I blow glass overhand, underhand. So a lot of artists do like they'll spin like this, but I actually work from this motion. So my hands actually go over and under. Okay. Um, so you hold it right up hand. here and then hold it here. I hold it with my left hand overhand and my right hand is like a guide and it like kind of I think like I do the same and way. And, mm -hmm. and that because that way it allows me to hold all my uh hold all my tools pencil pencil style is how I call it. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm going in to do something, you know, I'm I'm already like this versus a lot of I've seen a lot of artists that'll spin overhand and it's like I feel like you have more control when you're more when you're more intimate with it. and it's and it's uh it was it was not so because like a lot of time I'll do full rotation, but then other times I've found that like that rocking back and forth like you really find that nice that nice heat that even control because a lot of times like with glass it's being in control of the glass and you need to manipulate it to do what you need it to do mm -hmm. and so overall i found that that uh because I, I do overhand as well i'll do overhand overhand and i'll do underhand overhand it just uh I, I think it was super important to learn early on i learned that in like the first couple days i started blowing glasses he was overhand underhand and then over time i was able to find the use for overhand versus underhand over and you know what i mean and now i have that versus being restricted to just the one style in the same way you could be restricted to only shaping with the blow so it was nice to I have that, that bag of bricks and just yeah. keep finding new techniques new styles uh, and try it it may not yeah, be for you but people do stuff different all the time and like i'll, I'll be doing something one way and then he, he, someone will be like oh you're doing that backwards try it this way and it makes things 10 times easier like uh, clients were a bitch i had trouble figuring out that seal for the longest time and then someone was like hey do it this way instead and now you know it's like night and day so right yeah definitely differences in techniques can be can be a world of difference um uh, and then where can we where's the best place to follow you to see your work uh, is it Instagram, Facebook? Do you have a web page? It's all Instagram. Um, I, again, back to the marketing thing. I'm terrible with that shit. Um, I'm so thankful that Level 42 is not only a distributor, but they're a marketing company as well. Like, I mean, they take my glass all over the country. They they put it in a, in a case. They take my stickers with them. They take my T-shirts with them. You know what I mean? Like, they're they're reaching 100 shops in a week versus it, you know, take me years to reach that kind of, that kind of stuff. So, again, like, without them, you know, they're, they're they are – the majority of my marketing um so yeah level 42 would be where you could actually find a lot of my work for like shops anybody shops listening like that's my main guys they're the ones who help me out no shade because glass x also has done tremendous work for me um they also carry a large amount of my products and i know that both uh both stores or both distributors have done equal amounts of work for me. So I, I support them both fully. Um, I know I have some shops that only order from one and ones that order from the other. And I try to keep that as balanced as possible. I try to make sure everybody's fed. Um, but with that being said, yeah, NJR Glass on Instagram, that's where 90% of my stuff goes down. Everybody can, you know, reach me there, direct messages. Anybody ever wants to ask questions, wants to ask a tip, like, don't be, don't be afraid to ask. Like if you, if you're struggling with down stems, you're struggling with joints, like, please, I love please it. send me a message on Instagram, dude. I will spend two hours writing shit down. Like I will send you videos. I will fucking be, I will give you a demonstration. You can give me a live call. Like I'll fucking anything I can to make your glass blowing experience better. Because ultimately like at the end of the day, like I get to help somebody out like that's, that's crucial for me. So yeah, Instagram is uh, NJR Glass. Um, I have a Facebook page, but I never update it, so I'm not even going to worry about giving you the details on it. Um, I uh, found it was easy to just put it all in one place, and so. Well, hell yeah, uh, Nick! That was so awesome to sit here with you today. Uh, I, I really want to say, man. It, Likewise, I had a freaking smile the whole time. It was just a great time chatting glass with you and learning, yeah, man. learning about your process of of how you've come to where you're at today and. You've really, uh, I think, uh, gone quickly on your learning. Uh, so great job on that, too. I
man, I really appreciate you just taking the time to want to like to have the interest to want to talk to me. Like that was such a crazy thought. I was like, somebody wants to interview me. What the you fuck took am I going to talk me about? Too. Like, we, who wants to talk about me? Like, I was like, that's so cool. Like, so honestly, man, like, just thank you so much for taking the time to even want to do the interview with me. Like that's, that's pleasure, fucking brother. huge. Like I, I had a great time too. Like I'm, I've just been sitting in the shop this whole time. Just in love. I've been loving it. So cool. um, I'm, I'm stoked to see it come out too. Man, I'll be, I'll be the first one to share it and make sure everybody can get in there and get that information from you guys. So, all right. Well, with awesome. that, NJR Glass, it was great hanging out with you. Elevate, man. Thanks for listening, man. Thank you, everybody. Man, that was super cool. Just really cool to hang out and talk glass. Uh, just super awesome. Uh, I love it. I love doing what I get to do here. I feel uh, pretty special. Uh, really quickly, I do want to throw out there, we need your help. I need help getting the word out there. It is what it is. Uh, we don't do these crazy marketing things in magazines. We use you uh, and we need your help. Uh, it's grassroots. Go out there, sign up for elevateambassadors.com. Join as a doll or a gent and earn some free credits, uh, all kinds of cool stuff and know that you're helping to make a difference in, in my life and all the lives part of Elevate. Also, you need to check out Elevate, uh, <coughs> elevateveterans.com. It's a really cool 501c3 we have where we get to help out uh, veterans, which, uh, you know, they signed that uh, black book to uh, potentially help us out when we need their help. Anyways, Elevate, mind, body, spirit. <laughs>